What does a rate cut do? Does that get you to want to go out and buy a house or start a business? The, the recommendations around Corona are stay home, right. hunker down. Right. No one's out there spending. Yeah. I mean, Jason Furman, who's a former economic advisor to Obama, uh, put out a piece in the Wall Street Journal today suggesting Andrew Yang style cut a check for a thousand bucks to every fiscal American. stimulus. And I think they'll be on the Hill within a few weeks asking for that. When the precautionary measures that are being recommended around Corona would specifically hurt people in the service industry, exactly what you went through. It's going to be drastic. So how do you soften the blow here? Right. Because you had the Fed interest rate cuts just the other day. Yes. Didn't that's really not, uh, do okay. much there. Easing interest rates is not going to help the part time worker who loses their shifts or the moms or dads who so what can't does? go to work. Um, you can you can put together a payroll tax. You can create some sort of easement. Uh, uh, you can create something that's actually going to give low income people a boost, an actual check in the face of this, some actual dollars. Yeah, we saw Jason Furman, the, the former uh, mm -hmm. chair of the Obama CEO today, out this morning in the Wall Street Journal saying we should cut a thousand dollar checks to every adult in the U.S. That's the kind of thing that puts money. Page in out of Andrew Yang's book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Immediately can start spending. President Trump. He's not a traditional, you know, Republican, if you will. So he is entertaining things. I think that, you know, a, a different Republican may not. And according to Cutlow, they already are looking at helping people out. But the idea of starting to cut checks to everyone, a thousand bucks, fifteen hundred bucks, depending on how many kids are in the house. Is that the right right way to go? President Trump should not run, run on Andrew Wang, Wang Yang's uh, platform in terms of freedom dividend, right? We, w we need to uh, make sure that we look out for American business, look out for the working class citizen. I like what Larry Cutlow said on a needs basis, not just actually whip out the checkbook and rate everyone a check. This is not the uh, Bush era. Right. We have a strong economy. The numbers are growing strong. What we have to do is we have to say, look, there's record high GDP and stock market prices. You know what else are at record highs? Suicides, drug overdoses, depression, anxiety. It's gotten so bad that American life expectancy has declined for the last three years. We can pay for a dividend for all Americans using technology money, because right now you have trillion dollar tech companies like Amazon paying zero in taxes. So the question is, how do you balance that out? A value added tax is a much more efficient way to do it, and it's what every other country has already done. If you give the American people our fair share of every Amazon sale, every Google search, every Facebook ad, every robot truck mile eventually, then we can easily afford a freedom dividend of $1,000 per American. We are the owners and shareholders of this country, and this is a dividend for us. If we get some of the gains from this economy into our hands, then we'll create a trickle up economy. And that's what the freedom dividend is meant to kickstart. Yang, yang. In February, Stockton, California randomly selected 125 families and began giving them a basic income of $500 per month for 18 months. After the first five months, Stockton's mayor praised the preliminary results. He said it showed the basic income improved people's lives. Participants spent 38% on food, 24% on home goods and clothing, 11% on utilities, 9% on gas, while 18% was listed as other. Part of the problem there is it's a debit card and you can pull out cash rather than use the debit card and they can't track expenditures you make with cash. And I believe it was about 40% was pulled out in cash. So almost half of the money spent through this program is untraceable. Reitz points out the cost of UBI plans could be astronomical. In Andrew Yang's case, $3 trillion a year. So it comes down to the source of the funding. If we implement that program, we must cut other welfare programs. If that's done wisely, I definitely think that's beneficial both from an economic efficiency perspective and that people can decide for themselves what they'd like to spend that money on. This past weekend, thousands marched at UBI rallies in 30 cities around the world, including San Francisco. The lead organizer, Income Movement, is actually running its own UBI program where it gives out $1,000 a month to 50 individuals across America. What we're doing is taking that call, that recognition that both Andrew and all these other wonderful organizations and basic income have been talking about for quite a while and bringing it together so that in 2020 and beyond, we're thinking activism, we're thinking political engagement. Supporters come from all walks of life like Fred the Felon, a recovering addict who drives this truck across the country in support of Andrew Yang. I asked him about one of the chief concerns over Yang's freedom dividend. Would recipients use the $1,000 a month for nefarious purposes? When I buy a 
uh, stock from Verizon and I get my quarterly dividend, does the CEO in the boardroom say, oh, well, what is he going to do with that dividend money? Immediately following the march, Andrew Yang made an appearance stressing that basic income will be necessary because technology and robots will inevitably replace millions of workers. Berkeley study said that it would cost $3 trillion per year and 75% of current federal spending. What do you think of those numbers? Well, what they don't reference is the fact that our economy is up to $20.5 trillion in GDP overall, and that most of the money that goes into our hands is going to go back into the economy. It's going to expand the economy, increase tax revenue by hundreds of billions of dollars, save us billions on things like incarceration, homelessness services, emergency room health care. So if you look at it in context of our entire economy of almost $21 trillion, this is actually very, very affordable. Andrew Yang's Freedom Dividend is just one of the many ideas for achieving universal basic income. He does have the biggest stage right now, but supporters say if he were to step down from that stage, it's important that they build a movement strong enough to carry on. Mark New, CGTN, San Francisco. <laughs> yeah, but what we have right now doesn't work at all. No, and well, I'll take any of them then, over this. But look at the fantastic yeah. cabinet. Oh, well. Whoever w wins the Democratic yeah. election is going to have, folks. you know, yeah. I mean, look at all of you. A fantastic group of people for the cabinet and for other positions in the administration of probably Joe Biden. We well, don't know. We don't know. We'll, we'll see who it is. Yeah, someone called us the Avengers, uh, which is nice. Yeah. Yeah. Be great. Get this country back on track. Yeah. Have you thought about endorsing anyone? Uh, Joe called me a couple days ago. democratic process play out. Mm -hmm. I've also said that everyone knows I ran on this idea of universal basic income and that if a uh, right. candidate were to come out powerfully for uh, that, the freedom dividend, that would go a very long way. Yeah. <laughs> each and every one of them that came to this table about that and yeah, about the things did. that you were talking about. And they all kind of blew me off in a funny way because I think it's scary to them because it means having to go outside of the norm. And I think that's, that's one of the things that I think got me excited about you was that, oh, okay, I hadn't thought about this before. When you said... Listen, we need to be telling these people they got to pay their taxes. Like, hey, that's right. How come nobody's well, talking about that? Well, you also, that? Well, you also yeah. wanted to give money out, too. There was, yes. Yeah, that's that's, that's not that. the thing that got me. Oh. The thing that got me was finally somebody said, you do know that Amazon and these other groups are not paying any taxes. <clears throat> and they should be. And we should be getting some money here. Yeah. That was like, oh, snap. <laughs> okay. And I just, it was a fresh idea that seemed to be for the people. And I like that. Anything that suggests something great for the people, I'm all in. Well, I assume that you will have a platform at the convention to give yeah. a speech. I'm yeah. making that assumption you are a major presidential candidate. And maybe you can use that opportunity to implore the rest of the party if it's that important to you to do the freedom dividend and the taxing on Besides the Besides yourself, company. who yeah. do you think would be a great VP? Well, like you said, I mean, uh, there are a lot of great choices. I do think that if Joe's the front runner, which you'd have to say he is right now, that um, he needs to shore up his support among young people in particular. And mm -hmm. I think that his running mate might be an opportunity to do that. And Latinos, Joe? And Latinos. Yeah. And we kind of know, for better or for worse, uh, Joe's support and Bernie's support are almost like mirror images uh, of each other. Uh, so you need someone who can attract many of the same Latino voters and young people that Bernie's attracting. So AOC would, would be actually a good choice, except that she's a Bernie person. She's also not old enough. Well, she she's not as a VP? Nope. Yeah, well, the yeah, Constitution has a minimum line. age oh, for president, and it's conceivable that the vice president is going to be president. And what's this? I heard you wanted to run for mayor of New York. Uh, I love this idea. <laughs> To, to solve problems and as as much value as I can. Certainly, I'm more attracted to executive roles than I am legislative roles. But I'm going to make an announcement uh, today on the show that's not about uh, the mayoral race. It's about trying to further the ideas of the campaign in the days ahead. You want to do that now? Yeah, sure. I can do that right now. <laughs> So I am thrilled to announce that today we are launching a new nonprofit called Humanity Forward that will champion the main ideas of my campaign, a universal basic income for all Americans, an economy that works for us. 
uh, and the fact that our data should be ours, even if we're loaning mm -hmm. it to the tech companies. Mm -hmm. So we already have pledges of $3 million that we're going to give away to everyday Americans around the country in the days ahead. But the... The goal is to build a movement. And so uh, this is going to be a grassroots campaign or organization for in the months ahead. And one person who supports Humanity Forward in the month of March will get $1,000 a month for a full year uh, just to show that we can make this economy work for us, the people of this country. So if you want to find out more, you can go to the Views website uh, and find out more. Oh. <laughs>